Well, critical thinking, in our class at least with these projects, it's about tackling open-ended problems where there's a lot of different solutions for those, but finding an effective way to come up with an answer to those and to support whatever it is that they've come up with. Yeah. So how are we going to prove that, it, that intelligent design is not affiliated with religion? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't Maybe think it's possible. In this project, we saw Itana's group having to wrestle with how it was they were going to support the inclusion of intelligent design in the science classroom, which is a very open-ended problem. So they had to use their collaboration and their critical thinking skills to come together and come up with an argument that was going to be sound, that was going to be logical, that was going to be persuasive and to kind of counteract what it was they thought that the other team, their opposing team, was going to argue. It still Superior supports... beings are directly tied into religion. Yeah, and we should prove things. that evolution is tied to religion as well. So then that counteracts their argument. Now, our opponents may try to say that intelligent design is more based with creationism or Christianity. This is untrue. Because if intelligent design is with Christianity, then evolution can be considered to be with atheism, which is also a religion. Yeah, I think that if you watch all of the different opening and closing arguments for this project, you'll see how differently each student and each group approached this issue, approached this project. And we saw a lot of creativity just in watching those small pieces of this project, of the kinds of things that they brought into their arguments, of the way that they tried to persuade the school board. And a big part of that is being able to foster creativity. You know, I'll have maybe a group leader during this process or, or a member of a group will come up to me and they'll say, so what do you think about approaching this like this? If you're apparently this, immensely experienced intellectual with tons of background information, um, I'm going to want you to verify that. So I think you're putting yourself under a huge challenge. And I'll say, no, I don't think that's going to work because you've got this, you know, this situation, this situation, you're too far off. It's like, hmm. And then they'll go back and they'll sit down and then maybe 10 minutes later they'll come up and they'll say, what if we approached it like this? And it's like, <laughs> now you're in the right direction. What you want to do is you want to allow that, that free creative thinking but you also want to direct it. One thing that we really saw with Aitana and Claire's group was the ever-changing dynamic of communication and collaboration. We're pleased to have been able to teach you about the subject at hand, at least enough to use it in your everyday lives. Well, because, okay. So it is a bit long, so we would like it to be cut down a little bit. And we understand that it's going to be long because you just, like, everyone just had you shove a whole bunch of information into it. What? No, I know, but we just, we just don't want it to ramble on. I know. Whatever. I think you should talk a little bit slower because you're talking. Well, it's fast. okay. Anyway, so we, we have, it's rehearsal. We're rehearsing for content. Okay, can we please just listen for No, a it's rehearsing to make sure that everything works and is coherent. And it's very, very much a part of the group element for it to successfully work. And it's something that many of them really have to work with because while they may be a very, very gifted student, they may be used to doing very, very well, um, there's a whole other set of, of tools involved and abilities that are involved in being an effective communicator, being an effective collaborator. And it's not just being, you know, the best and the brightest. I really don't, uh, I'm just really confused. How about, how about you work with them? It's about being willing to compromise, and many have struggled with that issue. Being willing to engage people that have a difference of opinion from yourself, and work with them, and let them be heard. A big part of our classroom is based on technology, and the students have a project briefcase that incorporates all of the documents for the project, all of the resources, the students really need to navigate through and understand in order to effectively complete their project. And so we guide them with that. We do give them resources in the Project Briefcase websites that we find are useful, but a lot of it is on them to go out and investigate. So there's a little bit of a twofold technology use in this project, using our tools, our journals, our Project Briefcase that has all of our project documents, as well as going out on the internet and trying to find reliable sources, finding reliable information that they can actually take with them and use in their case. We actually had a student who was playing a particular witness from a, a case that actually took place and they were able to contact the actual person and they received a reply mm -hmm. and were communicating with this person about what their argument was. You know, the excitement of doing that under this context was, was really powerful. So what are they so saying? So what they're saying is, is that 
evolution um, has some cold hard proof and intelligent design not so that way now they're trying to turn around is intelligent design is now just a belief because there is no hard evidence how the heck are we going to turn an argument into that Ugh. one thing about working in a project-based environment is that you're really forced as a student to be flexible and to be able to adapt to what's going on in the classroom. It's not your traditional environment where you know exactly what you have to do, where you're given a worksheet and you have an assignment and there's one right or wrong answer. You're gonna have to work with personalities that you don't necessarily want to work with and find solutions to problems that you hadn't expected to be exposed to. And that's really helping these students go out into the real world where they have to be able to adapt and be flexible to different environments in the job place because nothing is static anymore, really. Tell what you know. I know that we're arguing that we should teach all scientific theories and because intelligent design is a scientific theory and evolution is a scientific theory, they should be taught side by side. Well, I think that one thing that we saw during this project in terms of initiative and self-direction is really that the students weren't always coming together in the way that they needed to, that one student might take the initiative to complete something. For instance, I know Aitana took a lot on herself in this project to do some research, give information to her group members to read up on, and kind of was relying on them to take the initiative to then go ahead and complete what she needed. And that didn't always happen. You saw students that sometimes were off task or were kind of doing their own thing, that didn't necessarily take the time to go home and do the research on their character or their role so much of this is, you know, it's how much they put into it, how much research they put into it, how much they choose to understand these concepts in the background. We're not there holding their hand the whole time. Dealing with the separation of church and state actually is quite a sensitive topic, and I'm not sure that we realize that as much as we should have. This year especially, we've done this project several years, but this year it seemed like we really had a diversity of religions, of the way that they interpreted this project. We had people, I think, all the way on the spectrum from maybe atheist or agnostic down to very fundamental Christian. And when you're talking about some of these issues about what role religion has in schools, it definitely was a sensitive topic and it really did force a lot of these students to kind of come out of their comfort zone a little bit, be sensitive to you know, the beliefs of others and figure out a way to make an argument for something that they didn't believe in or to listen to an argument that they hadn't really been exposed to before. The one thing about project-based learning as we see in this project is that the students are accountable not necessarily to us, but to each other. And that's really the upside of having them work in teams and have such a tangible product at the end where, you know what? The day of the presentation is coming, the day of their mock school board is coming, and there's going to be a real audience in here that's going to be judging them. And that really holds them accountable to performing. It's not about us, it's not about necessarily their grade, I mean that's part of it, but it's about the fact that they have to get up there and perform and they don't want to look like fools. And it is kind of that real world connection of having kind of the big bad guy on the outside that's going to be coming in and that they need to impress and that they want to win this. The goal of what this is meant to foster is that that support and their support for each other that not putting a lot of pressure on each other because hey this is my grade and you need to really do it but that <laughs> how can I help you so we can do better in this project um, the students did nominate each other to be group leaders that doesn't always happen sometimes the groups are formed and then they kind of decide within their group who's going to be the leader but this was nice because it was kind of a choice from the rest of the students and then those leaders actually sat down and formed the groups themselves. But in this case, Claire was the leader for her group, um, and Aitana was definitely going to be providing a huge support for her in that role, and was definitely one of the people that was essential in the mix of that group, because she also is a very strong leader. We have an extra day. We don't have an extra day. We're not going to have time. There definitely we were some holes in school. what was going on in the communication, in having the witnesses be relevant to the arguments, and being effective in their defense of their position. Um, and Aitana actually did end up stepping up a lot, even though she was not the designated leader. That's really one of the things that's great about these projects is that even though there might be one designated leader, all of the students have that opportunity to show initiative, to be a leader within their group. 